In this session, we'll look at configuring the boot manager. Boot managers, for all computer systems, tell the system where the boot image is or the boot files and assist in starting the system. BSD has a boot manager, Windows has a boot manager, Solaris, Linux, and so forth, they all have boot managers. Now these boot managers usually reside in the master boot record or MBR of the system, but they can reside in other places as well. Now BSD uses the boot zero boot manager by default. However, it can also use popular boot managers like Grub and Lilo. Grub is a very popular boot manager that's used in Linux distributions and a lot of people like it. Boot Zero is very good in that it does what it's supposed to do. It boots the system up, it gets it going, and you get a BSD Unix system. Grub is very useful when you want to customize a little bit, when you want to have menus and so forth, and when you want to have multiple operating systems on the computer and choose between them when you boot. Let's go ahead and take a look a little bit at Boot Zero. The first thing we want to look at is the Etsy FS tab. And the reason we want to look at that is that it will show us what the different boot partitions and slices are that are in the system. So let's take a look at that. We can say cat slash Etsy slash FS tab. This gives us the available boot devices and their mount points. So as we can see, all boot devices are designated by the slash dev slash and then a device. And all devices on the system basically follow that convention also. But right now we have slash dev slash AD0 slice 1A. That's mounted at root so we know that that's probably our boot slice or boot partition. Now one thing we want to mention is the terms slice and partition can be a little bit confusing based upon whether you're using BSD or Linux. BSD primarily uses slices which are then divided up into partitions and Linux and other operating systems but the naming convention is a little bit different so don't get confused. They basically call their slices partitions so it's a little bit of confusion there. But now that we've seen what the bootable drive and slice is we can go ahead and do a boot config and get some information on it. So if we type in boot CFG, or boot zero CFG rather, let's do a dash V on AD zero, that's our boot device, and we get some information like what kind of flag is set, what kind of, what type of bootable partition this is, its start, uh, cylinders, heads, and sectors, and so forth, its type, and where it ends with cylinders, heads, and sectors. Now you need to know these things if you're customizing boot partitions and, and other and slices and so forth. You'll need to know where these start and end points are. Now boot zero config basically gives us the ability to change the boot device configuration if we like. Now there are different options that we can use. Boot zero CFG and if you just type in that you're going to get some usage information. One important command is the dash capital B AD zero and that restores the boot zero config back to its original method. Now you can use different methods for this and I would recommend that you do some research on this before you start messing around with the boot devices and so forth because you can render your system unbootable if you don't. Now one thing I did mention was the use of grub and and Grub is not installed by default, so if you want to use it, you first must install the package. And once you install that package, you have to make a directory for Grub and copy those files to the slash boot slash Grub directory. Now, once you've done that, all you have to do is set up the menu.lst file, and that menu.lst file basically sets up the different partitions and different operating systems that you want to boot off of, and you're able to set that up fairly easily. Now, we're not going to go into setting that up, but I would recommend that based upon the unique geometry of the drives you have and the unique operating systems you have on your system that you do some research on this before you set it up. And again, keep in mind you need to back up anything you're doing because if you make a mistake, your system can be rendered unbootable. Now once you set up Grub, you'd have to actually overwrite the MBR with the sysctl command the system control command and that would overwrite the MBR and put Grub in, in the place of boot zero. So basically we've just touched on a little bit about boot zero and some of its configuration options and how it looks and what you should use it for. Again I would recommend you do some research on this. By and large boot zero should be your boot method of choice with BSD. If you've just got a standalone BSD Unix system even if it's networked if you have no need to boot to multiple operating systems or no need to customize the boot sequence then boot zero will do just fine for you. Again you really you may want to switch to Grub, which is a more popular boot manager if you're doing multiple boots between operating systems and you need a little bit more customization out of it. So we've briefly touched on the boot manager and boot zero.